we'll go to the uh, first uh, part here. Any public comments for items not appearing on the agenda today? Yes. Um, I was reviewing the minutes and noticed that starting in February of this year, the names of those people attending the meetings is not included, and I was wondering why that changed. I don't think we've included them for quite a while since we have the sign in sheet now, which gets attached. Because, yeah, I mean, I think that's when we changed it. Yeah. I think there was some discussion back then. And that's when we changed it because we have the sign in sheet. And it's just it's sim uh, similar to the commissioner's meeting. They don't list everybody that's in attendance from the public at those meetings either. There's a sign in sheet. We have a sign-in sheet. If there's a question, it stays with the minutes. I don't have a thought on that. Well, outside my school. So the answer, the answer is, and there is some discretion as to what's included in minutes. I think this is my personal opinion that minutes everywhere, not just in the county, but in every public sector, tend to tend to go up to a little bit too much in depth. Uh, we don't have to have a stenographic record of what everybody says in every minutes are meant to be merely this item was on here and this is the action. That's the purpose of minutes. Stenographic records take it to the next level and over time, I think there's a thing what I would call minute where we where we're adding detail and detail, and detail but from a technical standpoint, it's fine. So um yeah. <laughs> I, but I don't want to just say no because it's it's really um it's all over the board and, and boards tend to add more detail uh than is actually required. I just says change I'm curious about it yeah well from a consistency standpoint you have a point you know it's, do, do we want to include it or not? How, how difficult would it be to include the board members yeah. they're included yeah the board yeah. members the board members are listed who's here so. oh okay yeah but like was mentioned we have the signing fee and that's included as part of the budget yeah, we keep the sign in sheets. Yeah, I don't think I've ever been a member of a board, and other than maybe back in February, but that was what. So the sign in sheet is part of the record. Yes. Any other questions, comments, or messages? Sorry for going on too long about that, but there's. I get it. I just, I just think it's important to know when there's. Different court because they take everything we said. Then I go yeah. back, I would read the transcript yeah. and say, I can't believe I said that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, yeah, Thanks. sure. Any other public comment? Okay. Anybody here or here for anybody online? So we'll move on to approval of the minutes from August 8, 2024. Do you have a motion to approve the minutes? Mm -hmm. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. You opposed? All right, they're approved. Let's move on to Ward Irwin's uh, board reports. Good morning, everybody. Um, unless you haven't watched the news in the last few weeks, you will know uh, we had a visit from two state representatives, State Representative Arion and Krajewski, uh, one from Pittsburgh area, one from Philadelphia area. Uh, they visited our facility. Um, this was a follow-up to some uh, online meetings that Commissioner Concepcion and I had um, with them concerning voting uh, within correctional facilities. Uh, they liked what they seen uh, when we provided them with our policy and our procedures. So they put our facility on their list of facilities they were going to tour. Uh, they came here. We had a meeting here uh, in this room. We took a quick tour of the facility with them. Uh, and they were very impressed with what we do here with voting. Um, pretty much... Uh, paraphrasing, but we, we sort of set the standard for voting within correctional facilities. 
the the one representative um, had to admit that we were better than his home county, and he wasn't thrilled with that. So, <laughs> but anyhow, uh, then we moved from here to a, a public session down at the Willowbank Building, uh, a press conference basically where they reiterated a lot of things that were said in here. And uh, bottom line is they were very thrilled with what we're doing here, and they're hoping to include some of our policies and procedures in House Bill seventeen fifty six, I believe it is. So. Um, just thought I would highlight that, that uh, some good positive feedback for the facility. Um, and we wanted to do a thank you for all of our volunteers that come into the facility, uh, to help facilitate the various programming that we have. And we offer about 30 programs at last count. A lot of them are facilitated by volunteers uh, who offer their time uh, free of charge to the facility. Um, and we just thought it'd be a good time to say thank you to those. They, they do a lot for the facility and, and it helps helps with the incarcerated individuals, giving them the opportunity to attend different programming, everything from AA and NA up through entrepreneur leadership classes. So um, that ends my warden's report. Any discussion on the warden? All things political nowadays. Uh, thanks for promoting voting. But I'm just curious, can you give out information on different candidates for the inmates? No, we do not. Okay. Um do we just on how to vote how, how to vote? And there was some discussion of that during our meetings, and the facility doesn't want to appear to be partial one way or the other. So if candidates choose to mail inmates uh, information, they can do that. Thank you. Yep. Any other questions? Okay. Oh, what, what do we do that's extraordinary? Do we encourage registration? Uh, we encourage registration. We encourage voting. A lot of counties don't um, have voting procedures in their jails. Um we've had numerous counties reach out to us since this event. Hey, can you share your policy with us? So um, at some point it's going to be mandatory what we're doing voluntarily. I think at some point it's going to be mandatory for all county jails to comply with voting procedures. And Center County is again ahead of, ahead of the curve and leading the way. So. I admit I'm ignorant. What's, what's the voting of person that felons can vote? Convicted felons cannot vote. So if you are incarcerated, yeah, while incarcerated. That's who we're talking about, though, while they're incarcerated. Once they leave, that's a whole different story. But a convicted felon cannot vote while you're incarcerated. So if you're charged, not you particularly, if an individual is charged with homicide and hasn't been to trial yet, technically he or she can vote up until the point they are convicted and then begin their incarceration. If you're in here for a whole bunch of retail thefts and none of them are felonies and you've been convicted, you can vote. Report. All right, we'll start with our population for August. Uh, Center County unsentenced average daily population was 67. Sentenced average daily population was 34. Total average daily population for Center County is 101. Our Tenant County unsentenced average daily was 35. Sentenced average uh, was 38. Total average population for Tenant Counties was 73 bringing our overall total daily population average to 174. August work release and reentry numbers, Center County had nine individuals. Schuylkill is four for a total of 13. Uh, something we recently added, um, it's a picture of a lime green, bright yellow vest. Since we have individuals who work overnight shift at Giant, um, and they crossed the road. We wanted to take safety precautions and make sure that they were easily noticeable. They just wear this to and from work, don't wear it while they're at work. It's just a safety precaution that first time we've had inmates working overnight that walk to and from work. So we had to do some adjusting on the fly. Uh, centerpiece had five for the month. Outside private employment was seven and facility grounds was three. I'm sorry. Before we finish, Dispatch of slides. I just wanted to um, thank your staff. When I was at the McDonald's Grand Opening a couple of months ago, 
um, all of the uh, upper management and one of the owners said how wonderful a partnership they have with Center County and it plays slightly into their reasons for opening up that location where they did. I believe they do have one of our returning citizens now in the management capacity. Uh, and I believe uh, the giant now has two of our returning citizens yeah. in management capacity. Yeah. So and again, thank you so much for uh, making that happen. And also want to point out to the audience that I don't believe you can be on work release until you've been sent. Correct. 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 So it's not that we have nine citizens out of roughly 100. It's we have nine mm -hmm. citizens out of, out of our out of our 38. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, one of the uh, individuals who was previously incarcerated with us from Schuylkill County who worked at Giant here, when he got released, he's now working at a Giant near Schuylkill. So they just transferred him and kept a job for him. So it was nice. All right. Uh, medical health services report for August. Uh, sick calls uh, seen by nurses was 112. Sick calls seen by the physician or the PA was 143. Outside consultations with physicians is 14. Medication assisted treatment program. Uh, this is an all time high for us. We had 39 individuals participating. Um, five new intakes uh, were actively on MAT prior to being incarcerated. So that what that means is they were in the program uh, prior to being uh, their charges that brought them to jail. And they just continued with the program here within the facility. Uh, we just got notified yesterday. Uh, we are have been awarded the grant for the Vivitrol for $93,844. So that will be starting. Um, at this time, it can only be used for Vivitrol, but there is talks of expanding that so it can be used for any of the medications. So that'll be a big boost as well for us. August detox information, total new commitments detoxing was 17. They were all from Center County. Methamphetamines, uh, individuals had meth, six. Alcohol was eight. Benzodiazepine was two. Suboxone was three. And fentanyl, two. Uh, multiple drugs in their system. Five individuals had multiple drugs. This is probably the first month in a long time that meth hasn't been our top uh, detox that we've had in car uh, initial incarceration. So, Mental health services report. Uh, mental health stability rating A, we had 50 individuals. Stability rating B, 26. Stability rating C, 114. And stability rating D, 39. That concludes the facility report, sir. Any comments or questions from the board on the facility? Anybody from the team? I'm confused, I think, about the total residents here. Are there 101 from Center County and 174 from Center County? No, 100, 174 is total. Total is 174. Yeah. 101 from us, 73 from Tenant Counties. Is Huntington County still sending inmates? Yes. We have about 25 from Huntington currently. That's the third most now. Schuylkill leads the way. We have 37 from Schuylkill, then Huntington's next. And it trickles all the way down to some counties have one. Union County has eight with us currently. Northumberland County has three with us. So, yep. All right. Good business. Have an update on the RFQ. Uh, as everybody knows, this uh, proposal went out and it was uh, initially due back May 10th. Um, all the board has received the booklet that was submitted by Trans Systems. Uh, the board has received the cost summary, the initial cost summary, uh, estimated cost to do the study, $164,890. Uh, after we met with Trans Systems, had a meeting with them to go over their proposal, uh, talk about some of the participants they had listed in the proposal. Um, they were able to eliminate some of the staff that they had uh, initially in the proposal while still keeping with 
meeting all the requirements of the proposal. Uh, so that lowered the cost to an estimated cost of $82,840. Um, what will happen now is we'll have one final meeting with Trans Systems. Then they will need to submit a contract to be reviewed. Once they submit a contract, that will go to a uh, center county solicitor. Um, once she approves the contract, then that would then go in front of the board of commissioners for their consideration at that time. Uh, I estimate probably at least another two months until we see a contract and get it through the legal process of review. Um, and then the, it'll, like I said, it'll go to the board of commissioners for final, final discussion and uh, any movement they choose to make at that time. Mr. Frannick, did I miss anything? Other than the Penn systems came here on site and yeah. the ward and I um, walked with them around so they, they have a better idea of exactly they have the context of seeing yep. the place in person. So I think that played into it as well. We have a good understanding of the project. Any uh, questions or comments from the board? Right from the public? Yes. Question. We just want to express um, how appreciative we are because this is reassures to the community that it's moving forward. So thank you all for your hard work. Um, and if you can, sorry, I'm a little bit slow this morning. It's two months from now to when it could be to the commission. I'm, I'm estimating two months to, until they get us a contract and then our solicitor reviews it. And if there's any comments, questions, it goes back to their side for their attorney to look at. Um, so I'm estimating two months. Um, and it would go to the solicitor and then... And then what, once, once, once the center county solicitor puts the final stamp of approval that she's okay with the contract, then it gets put on a commissioner's agenda for discussion and action on it at that time. And kind of just lay out the legal aspect of that. Obviously, the solicitor will take a look, so a lot of it has to do with lawyers. Yeah. So it's <laughs> The lawyer is going to say, well, this is important to work on this first, or they're going to meet so that uh, I, I get you to do an estimate in two months, but I mean, that's definitely an estimate. Yeah. You have to see how the council gets back and forth, how many questions we're going to have on the contract, what that update is going to be. And um, hey, anybody knows lawyers can be super slow. Yeah, so. yeah it, it may be longer, but I can assure you it's probably not going to be any sooner than two months. So, <laughs> so yeah, it depends on how much. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. Any other questions or comments from the public? Yes. So I guess commissioners can start trying to find the money. <laughs> I'm thinking about it. What's that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, for, for Mr. Frantic, is there anything that the board we need to do, or is that just kind of in, in the county purview now? And we just kind of. Well, given that it's there is a revised proposal. If you want to take an action, we would recommend the revised proposal back to the board. Since we have a few. Okay. Anybody want to make that? Yeah. So, anybody second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? All right, on the new business. Uh, I don't have any new business uh, per se, unless the board has something. I don't have anybody from the board have any business. Reports. Uh, Carrie notified me last night she wasn't going to be able to make the meeting today. Um, she was just going to mention the the hope ceremony uh, went well at Talleyrand Park. It was fairly well attended, and uh, that was all she had for the month. Very good speakers. Very good speakers. Thanks. Good. <clears throat> That's it for monthly reports from us, sir. All right. Anything on the month report? Or in the public or community updates. Center piece, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, I don't have a whole lot of updates. I did email some of you guys that have gotten the invitation for the October 27th, 30th anniversary. And if you didn't get one and you'd like to keep informed, you may find me email me at Robert Um, I do have a question, and this is um, I've been getting questions from community volunteers. That I don't know quite how to answer. And if this isn't the place to ask it, just tell me if we can arrange. 
but what the difference is that they've seen over over the past even five years the amount of time in which individuals are at centerpiece like we receive somebody on monday and they're leaving the next month to go to release so what is the stipulations and they're coming to centerpiece what is what has caused the changes and do we need to um, work with you guys to change some of our focus because i'm getting ready to hire people to fill what we're not getting from from here and i would rather add some work release at centerpiece so we continue to work with the population that we want to work with but i don't know how to go about it answering these questions it it varies. So if we have an individual that starts at centerpiece and then Miss Billet was able to get him or her a job and they want them to start the next week, obviously we would send them to the, the private employment job. Uh, with giant McDonald's being close, they're usually always hiring. So sometimes you may see people for a long periods of time. Uh, other times it may be brief, a week, even a couple of days. Uh, it depends on how quick they find employment, private employment. So, and that again that that can vary depending how quick usually mcdonald's is pretty quick if they're hiring somebody and hey can you start tomorrow you know so is there a possibility of having both the free entry and work release on the same site what do you mean so like they come to us and they work and then when they find an outside so if i had two or three positions that i was going to pay like giant or mcdonald's or mm -hmm. something like that is there a possibility of having both or is it just one or the other? So you want to hire these the individuals? If, if that's what it takes to continue to work with the population, you, you, that you, work with them, you, you, because that's our mission. You, you would be eligible to hire them into a position if you choose to. Yeah. So, so it's not a conflict for us to have both entry, entry and work. I, I don't I don't think so. I couldn't see any conflict other than some individuals may be upset they're they weren't the ones hired and they're coming there to volunteer for four dollars a day versus you're getting paid minimum wage over here. Um, but it wouldn't be. And I do understand that, but I mean, like if I only have so many, you know, hourly yeah. positions available, and somebody, you know, they just want to get out because they want to get out, and I do know we have a lot of those. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to figure out the best way. We want to work with this population, <laughs> and that's what our mission is. That's what our passion is. Um, and it's just that if the numbers aren't consistent, you know, we're like, what can we do to continue? And we we want to just broaden our horizon mm -hmm. so that we can continue to make yeah. a difference for them, for our community. Initially, I don't see any neg negative uh, of hiring them as an employee at Centerpiece. Um, so you can retain them longer. Um, but give me some time to think about that, and I'll talk to Ms. Billa, too. Is, um, I know a lot of them, like the people that are in the that we have right now, he's a Google County resident. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he said, you know, I'm going home to my permanent job. Would it make more sense that if we only said we would do the hourly employees for people that are out of the county, so we didn't send people in the county? Or those are just some things for you to think about. Yeah, maybe. Uh, we can get together. Yeah, we can get together at some point, uh, three of us and Miss Billet, and chat and see what that would look like and come up with a plan. Yeah. 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 And I mean, if we, I mean, we just, I mean, you have talked to my board and said, what can we do to continue? Because we love working with the population that we work, that we work with. And, um, you know, if it means that we have to change as times change, we're willing to do that. Um, so I'm just, you know, letting you know that we're, you know, we're willing to look at what we can and work with you guys. And we'd love to hear any thoughts any of you have. That, that, you know, that you We'll look so at is that, that happen? Have you noticed this happening more since Giant opened in McDonald's and there's more opportunity for um, right next to the prison or something? Well, I a little of those, and I also recognize that the census is a lot more than when I started. Oh, yeah. Um, and I, I also, you know, watching the unsentence and all of that, and then also there's the ABCD categories, and so there's a lot that plays into it. I understand that. Um, it's just trying to figure out. You know, when people ask me and I don't know how to knowledgeably answer them, that was the point of my question today. I want to be able to to not just say, well, I really don't know, but, you know, 
Um, so, you know, again, I just wanted to think outside of the box to say, and, and I get it, people want to start paying towards their fines and their lawyer fees and all that. I totally understand. So um, if we lose them for, for that, and I'm looking to hire somebody outside, and I'm having turnover from that because of, um, you know, again, just like everybody else, they get offered something more, something else. Um, so if we have to change something a little bit, I'm willing to do that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we're willing to sit down and discuss it and see if we come up with something that works. Mm -hmm. It kind of looks like you're you're becoming a victim of the <laughs> criminal justice um, ecosystem successes. And it's yeah. Conversation. It's just you know we want um, our heart is to work with them to help them that they're more successful upon reentry. Yeah. Exactly. And um, if we're not able, you know, I can't tell you how many we in the last year and a half. We've done a lot of classes with them, including teaching them how to balance the checkbook. I mean, I can't emphasize enough how many of them when they get out of jail and they get that first check, they run the sheets and they buy a red bull, cigarette, <laughs> and they don't stop and consider what else they could be doing with that money. One class, we literally, I went and bought five pounds of frozen chicken and vegetables, and then I went and bought red, red bull and bake and candy and stuff. What do these three things have in common? They're like absolutely nothing. Like how they do, they all talk to Jack and mm -hmm. And then we have them plan, you know, on Monday for Philip, we have them plan a Monday meal for everybody who was there. We said, this is how much money you got to spend. And then we gave them a list, you know, they said, well, we want a chicken, this, this, this. And so I showed them online, okay, let's look at Walmart, how much is a frozen chicken? We looked at Wise, everybody that had online that they could look at the prices. They got it all down. They had five dollars left, and they said, "Can we add ice cream?" Sure. <laughs> <laughs> but it's practical skills like that that we're trying to teach them. That a lot of them say, "Nobody ever taught me that before. Yeah. Nobody ever showed me." And I don't want to lose that component because we all know that's one of the things that they get in trouble with. And we also tell them, "You have to pay your fines and fees first. That comes before your day or your, you know, whatever." So I don't. You know, I'm willing to change whatever we can so that we continue to help them be successful when they get Thank you. That's from the board. Thank you for bringing me. I had a further question about the unsentenced and sentenced. The unsentenced seems to be creeping up versus the sentence. Is that am I wrong? It it, it it varies. Um, and as the judge said several meetings ago, um, individual A may take longer to get through the court process than individual B. Um, so it, there's a lot that goes into that. And a lot of it is dictated, again, by attorneys from both sides. If they're trying to work out a plea deal or get the charges lessened, it takes time. So that sometimes those numbers, they, they fluctuate. And it's not always the same 78 so that that can be misleading it's not like we have the same 78 individuals all month 10 could get released and we get 10 new ones to backfill those you know so it it's a fluctuation and the end then that does that include people who have been sent but then they're back to parole it's violated it, it depends probation. it depends if they have new no probation is considered sentenced but if they have new charges they're technically unsentenced because now they have outstanding charges so there's a lot of a lot of factors that go into what you're back for. And then unable to get work for the because they're waiting other other charges, yes. Yes. So what, what happens is let's say someone has a, a criminal conviction for uh retail theft and then they uh get arrested for like a second DUI. So they're already on probation. For the retail debt, and then I have this new charge. So the attorneys will get together with the DA's office and say we need to call a global resolution. We need to resolve the probation as well as the new charge. There's also guidelines about what that sentence should look like. So for a second one, it could be six months, five years, or something like that. Or and uh, they'll sit on the probation because they want to resolve it all together at one time. And also they're getting credit for the time they have to do anyway. So. I mean, that's just one instance, but I mean, there are there are a lot of factors that kind of play into to how this plays out. The one thing I will say is that with the passage of the probation reform, 
and we've already not we've done this, but there's there's not so much housing people for technical violations anymore for probation. That's not really where they get the wrong records. That and there are certain for your first offense, like you can only be like the max of 15 days and things like that. So I, I I think we haven't really been outside that to begin with, but I think if, if it's at all, that should help decrease some of that time for people that might be on the or probation. But that, that was just recently passed. It was under the effect of the HL last issue. Yeah. So I'm kind of curious to see in the case of Lyons, let it play. We still see how it works. I'm going to kind of watch the numbers in the next couple months to see if the probation form is because it does not do like this. Yeah. And, and we started. Uh, Early last year, um, we keep a list of everybody's in the facility on a probation violation um, without new charges. And we work with probation pretty closely. Hey, this individual has been here 15 days. What Can you tell us what's going on with him? Oh, yeah, he has new charges coming. So we're waiting for those new charges to arrive. We know they're getting arrested again for this violation by the police. So those things. So no one is sitting here that gets lost in the shuffle because we have a, a, a list that we keep just of the probation violation ones, which keeps us ahead of the curve of this new law. And then every quarter we have a meeting with Judge Grind and the other judges, uh, probation's involved. Sometimes a DA shows up uh, at the facility to talk about anybody that's still outstanding or lingering. And sometimes, like the judge said, it's a long process. Um, we, we had an individual, I won't mention any names, who's recently sentenced, but we've had him for maybe a year and a half as an unsentenced individual, because there was back and forth between the attorneys of what deal can I get for my client? Um, so, and he just recently got sentenced, but he was here all that time as an unsentenced individual because there was that process going through the court system. So. And just the, how this works too, probation is a court So Glenn works with probation. And then, Morning, how you doing? I'm good, how you doing, Joe McKenna? Excellent. Oh, I'm excellent. Uh, well, can you can you well, excuse me? Like can you mute? Can you mute your microphones, please? Thank you. Yeah. yeah. So um, <laughs> we have meetings and they let you can just mute. Them. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do here. You can start yelling at me. So we meet to make sure that it, no one's being held like. We don't give probation the power yeah, to make wrong. decisions. So like, I, I review everything. So they'll, they'll flag if there's something going on that comes to me. That yes. Bring up probation. So <clears throat> there's there is a system that's played for a couple of checks and balances to make sure that something is not sitting here at that. We do that monthly. All right. Anything else? All right. So I think that takes us to prison. Yeah. Uh, real briefly, um, we're busy. Our chapter is growing. It's um, we, we send people who do a lot of visits in Rockview and Bend Townships. The last week we spent about six hours in each facility doing a walkthrough. Uh, uh, so we have a lot of data, we have a lot of information. In our last meeting, we discussed what do we do with our data. Like what do we, so it's always been our practice since Janet and I were doing the Prison Society, and that's me and Nancy, they're kind of the senior head is. It's always been our policy if there's an issue, we come talk to the way. Just say, hey, we have this, or we email, and he's always, I mean, we always seem to resolve it, or, or at least get it on the table. So, but we make a lot of visits, and there's a lot of categories. So we do medical, people complain about medical, they complain about harassment, they, they give just a variety of complaints. And so we've broken them down. And rather than just have the information sit in our, in our minute book, uh, we discussed at our last meeting the possibility of just sharing with you how many visits we've had in the last month, how many hours that our volunteers have put in, and just like categorize. Like we had this many people have a medical issue, or this many people have an issue with commissary or whatever. So uh, since Ken's one of the main visitors that come here, we just asked him if he could do that. So for each meeting when it comes time for our report, if he would be able to share that with you, uh, that's what we'd like to do. So just an explanation as to what Ken's last year. Yeah, we decided to, well, people report on Rockview and Ben, we might as well report on our visits here. Not only just to keep a record, but also to help inform the board on the issues that the, the uh, returned citizens are raising with us. 
So this is our initial attempt. This is actually for two months. We plan to do this monthly. Um, so we, we you know, had about a visit a week on average. Some weeks it's four, some weeks it's none. Uh, like I remember losing somebody after today, just one. And so we thought we'd list the issues raised on the left. Um, so uh, on this month, uh, somebody has ongoing dizziness. And usually we do some kind of action. Like we'll just report what people said or complained about or their issues to the to the administration. We just send an email or whatever. Um, it's interesting. A couple were they had pre-prison injuries and treatments and maybe a diagnosis, but they didn't feel like they were getting follow up on that or they needed to go back to that person and it was hard to get out for a, a reconsult or whatever follow up on that. So. Uh, some some people have asked that's actually to call the doctor. Uh, I did that, you know, to get them to send information here so that you all would have everything. And then they needed to do a release of information, medical release. And so I asked the counselor to make sure they got that so that they could fill it out and it get sent. Just so you know, um, since we're on that topic, yeah. every inmate is offered that upon commitment. If you come in and you have a pre-existing medical condition, medical will seek those records from the doctor. But the individual has to sign the release of information so medical can obtain those records. If the individual says, I'm not signing it, yeah. medical can't get the information. That is a standard right. so thing here for us. They messed up. They didn't sign or they didn't think about it at the time <laughs> or whatever. They could get them later. They can get yeah, them. they can get them anytime. So a lot of it's educating everybody, you know, that we can do this and people. Um, we get staff complaints. Uh, so and so CO is abusing me or harassing me or whatever. So we report those uh, to the administration. Legal issues, you know, a couple of these are they don't like their public defender. They don't feel like the public defender is doing a decent job of representing them. So what do they do then? Or the public defender doesn't contact them back. One one line of a new public defender. Uh, what's the process for that? Uh, so sometimes there's a follow up conflicts. Uh, sometimes there's bullying or we'll feel like other inmates are being <clears throat> nasty. Sometimes there's communication issues. That's what the mail patients without people outside they don't think they're getting their mail. Yeah. So we thought we'd just we'd do the kind of report every month. Um, I don't know. I, I sent this to uh, the administration uh, like last week. You could get it electronically if that was possible for our paper. I think you just bring bring whatever you want to present, and then yeah. And I was trying to best. do it electronically so people not here could get it, uh, and you could have it ahead of time. But, so your your guys would just bring it. Paper. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Any questions? Anything else you want us to include in this? <laughs> right. The, I guess we move on to announcements. We have none from our side, sir. Right. We need a German part of it. We have a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those in favor? Opposed or hearing, so we're adjourned and we'll.